For discrete dynamical systems, we need to compute powers of matrices. So how about powers of matrices in Jordan canonical form? Computing powers of j lambda minus lambda i is easy, but unfortunately that is of help. We can do a nice little trick though. Computing the matrix exponential of a j lambda is easy. And using this exponential, we can compute all the powers of j lambda. In the end, we are left with a fairly easy form. You will learn all of this in this web lecture, so let us get started. So first of all, it's important if you want to compute powers of a GCF matrix that computing the power of one Jordan block is sufficient. Because if we have, for example, two, then if you take the kth power, it's just the kth power here and the kth power there. So we just have to bother uh, with the matrix consisting of one Jordan block. And secondly, uh, if your matrix is similar to a GCF matrix, uh, then we know that h to the power of k is just p times GCF to the power of k times p inverse. So we only have to uh, um, uh, be bothered with uh, matrices which are already in GCF form. If they are similar to GCF, then it's also easy. Just plug the P and the P inverse around. Now, let us take a look at the basic idea. Well, computing powers of J lambda itself is difficult, but if you take J lambda minus lambda I, then it's easy uh, because it will become a zero matrix at a certain point. Now, the second idea is that the computation of e to the power J lambda T is easy. We have seen how this is done. Uh, before. Uh, so we can also do that relatively easy. So you, uh, now we define this as the function f of t equals identity plus j lambda t times one half j lambda squared t squared. So all our powers of g lambda are somewhere in the f of t. So how do we get them out the f of t? So we can compute f of t. So how the idea is to get the j lambdas out of there. Well, if you compute, for example, f prime, then this term cancels out and you, you get your, your j lambda. And if you compute uh, f double, so differentiate f prime, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, then you uh, uh, get your j lambda squared over here, and, and so on and so forth. Now you can do the following trick. If you uh, substitute now zero all the time, you get, for example, uh, f prime of zero gives you exactly your j lambda, f double of zero gives you your j lambda squared, f triple of zero gives you your j lambda cubed, as you see over here, and so on and so forth. So if you have your uh, f of t, you can compute all the powers of your j lambda by differentiating uh, uh, your f of t a couple of times and plugging in t equals zero. So let's take a look at an example how this is done. So for example, this already pretty big j lambda. Now we know how to compute e to the power j lambda t. You get e to the power lambda t's everywhere. And then once t's, uh, one half t squared, one over three factorial t cubed and so on. So there we have our uh, e to the power j lambda t. So that is our f of t. And now in general, if you want to compute the k's power, you will have to differentiate this k times and that is a bit annoying because we have products all the time, like t cubed and times e to the power lambda t and so forth and so and so forth. So we have to differentiate products. But note something nice if you differentiate products. If, for example, your f is g of t times h of t, then f prime is a product rule gives g prime times h plus g times h prime. Do it again, you get g double times h plus g times h prime plus g times h prime plus g h double, which can be uh, shortened as g double h plus 2 times g prime plus h prime plus g h double. And if you differentiate again, first this one, g triple h prime, uh, g triple h and g double h prime, then differentiate this one. 2 g double h prime plus 2 g prime h double, and differentiate this one, g prime h double plus g h triple, which can be summarized as g triple h times 3 times g double h prime plus 3 times g prime h double plus g times h triple. 
So you see in total you have to differentiate three times, uh, either G or H, and the weights are given by 1331 here, either binomial coefficients. So if you compute the nth derivative of such a product, so what do you do? You differentiate the first part k times, the second part n minus k times, and this is prefactor is given by n over, both, uh, over k. Now let's do an example. If we uh, want to compute, for example, the tenth derivative of our f13 element. So this f13 element was 1 half t squared times e to the power lambda t. What happens if we compute the tenth derivative? Now, uh, first of all, we uh, comp uh, uh, differentiate the e power 10 times, gives us a lambda uh, to the power 10, and leave the 1 half t squared, uh, 10 over 0. Then differentiate this part nine times and this, this uh, second part once, giving it 10 over one. Then differentiate this one eight times. And uh, if you differentiate one half t squared twice, you get one. And there, uh, there it stops. If you would uh, do it more then you uh, differentiate one half t squared three times and you get already zero. So that's the uh, tenth derivative. Then you have to plug in zero. And you see that you're left with only one term. You're left with only this term over here. So the uh, the tenth derivative of the one three element in zero is ten uh, over two and lambda to the power eight. And then we uh, can uh, generalize uh, this, of course, if you don't differentiate ten times, but instead we differentiate n times, then this uh, this uh, ten becomes an n, and this uh, eight. It becomes n minus 2. And uh, now we did it for the element 1, 3. You can generalize that to a general element 1j. So the 3 becomes a j. So that uh, turns out that you have to replace the 2 over here by j minus 1. And the 2 over here also by j minus 1. So here you have your uh, general expression. And that is nice because now uh, we can uh, compute... Uh, uh, all the, uh, the all the powers of uh, j lambda so because here we have our elements so we get lambda lambda to the power n on the diagonal then lambda to the power n minus 1 above that and weights uh, n above, over 1 and then uh, on top of that lambda to the power n minus 2 and n over 2 and then lambda to the power n minus 3 over there and n over 3 so that's what you get for your j lambda to the power n. And if you have bigger ones, you just get more uh, 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 more diagonals above that. So this algorithm allows us to compute also large powers of j to the power n, which is nice if we want to solve, for example, dynamical systems.